Welcome to Cheese In Depth. I'm Michael Landis, and today's webinar is sponsored by the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. With over 1,200 licensed cheesemakers in the only state that requires a license to make cheese, they are also the only place outside of Europe with a master cheesemakers program. Today I'm talking with Mary Lindman from, with the Pine River, and she is the marketing director. Mary Lindemann has been the marketing director for Pine River Prepack Incorporated since 1980. Throughout her 40 years at the company, she's contributed to every part of the family-run business, from working in production to leading the sales and marketing team. Mary and her husband, CEO Phil Lindemann, exhibit an, at nine national trade shows each year and many local community events spreading the word on the award-winning gourmet cheese spreads. When she's not at Pine River, you'll find Mary donning a hat and shopping at a local thrift store, making her own Pine River logo jewelry, working in her beautiful gardens, or spending time with her four children. Mary, welcome to the webinar. Hi, Michael. How are you today? I'm doing good today. Good. Thanks for the opportunity to talk about our award-winning cheese spreads. And just even just to um, let people know what cheese spread is all about, that it's not just for crackers and it's not just for the holidays. My, my start in the Pine River world is kind of a cheesy love story. Um, 1979, I attended um, a tech school to go for fashion merchandising. I liked clothes and I liked design and all that kind of stuff. But about mid-semester, I, I, didn't, I didn't really like the program. It wasn't really what I thought it was going to be. And I had met another girl there and she felt kind of the same way. And she said, you know, I'm gonna leave that semester. And I said, I think I am too. So that was the plan. But she said, you know what, we're college kids. We should still go on spring break. And I'm like, you're right. So she set us up for Mar in March that we were gonna take a trip to the Bahamas. And it was one of those where the whole plane goes to a hotel and you spend a week, uh, fun, sun and rum. You know, that's all I was, I was looking for. Well, on the plane, on the way there, there was a, a ruckusy group and kind of loud and talking and being silly. And uh, they were kind of chanting this, Lindemann's the name and cheese is the game. And I'm just like, what is going on? And I happened to, there was a guy sitting right behind me. And I looked through the crack of the airplane seat and I, I looked at this young guy and I thought, I could live with him. Weird, right? Well, we get off the plane and he meets up with the rest of his Lindemann crew and they're talking and being silly. And he says to one of his cousins, I'm gonna marry that girl. So there we are, March, 1980 and 1981. I'm married and I'm the marketing director and I'm part of Pine River and it's been an awesome ride ever since. Um, I do do a lot of things at Pine River over the years. Um, like you had said, I've worked on the line. I've had to pick up, um, parts that a machine is down and they need it in an emergency. Uh, also doing just, you know, pick up uh, cleaning supplies. But more recently, it has been the trade shows and exhibiting and putting on displays, um, even for local Rotary Club, Chamber of Commerce and such. Um, but my main thing I love to do is to show you that cheese spread is not just for crackers. We say spread beyond the cracker. And Michael and I are gonna talk about that a little bit later. So, and that's the, the most fun about that. Uh, that was a product or a spread that my husband really wanted to make. Oh gosh, it's probably 10 years or more. And that the secret was to finding a really good aged Asiago, hence the name. It had to have just the right bite and smoothness and sweetness. And he just searched it out and searched it out and searched it out and he finally got it. And that is probably why it was a first or a second place winner at the World Championship Cheese Contest this year. And the only reason it was second is because Jalapeno took first. So um, yes, aged Asiago. So it's a blend of the Asiago and cheddar. All of our spreads start out with cheddar. That's one thing I probably should tell you. And then as we go along, Pepper Jack has real Pepper Jack and um, our Swiss Almond has real Swiss. Blue cheese has a blue cheese in it. So that's what makes the difference, makes the flavor. So, all so, right. So what are you, what are you going to pair this with? 
Okay, I, I, the HSC I go today, I put it on a, uh, a wrap. Actually, this is a flatbread with some turkey, some uh, sun-dried turkey, and then just the Asiago. So all I did is I spread it as thick as you want with the Asiago, put a couple pieces of the um, uh, smoked turkey on there, or the uh, sun-dried turkey. You could also add lettuce, tomato, whatever you wanted, then roll it up. I kind of used a little of the spread as a glue to keep it nice and tight. You could also cut this in, into little pinwheels. Um, when I went to make these this morning, I didn't have the green spinach ones, which make them even prettier looking, but they still are delicious. Should we eat it? Hmm? Wow, that's, that's amazing. You know, mm -hmm. uh, wraps make it so simple. You can make these, put them in a little baggie, you have them for lunch, have them for snacking. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a little leftover turkey and Thanksgiving, a little yep. bit of cranberry in there. So you yes. can really have a lot of fun playing with those. Cranberry so, and also scallions is good too. Um, another thing that I do with the aged Asiago is I've added it to mashed potatoes or really a hot item that you can buy in the grocery store in the frozen department is that rice cauliflower. I stir some of that in there and it's a nice side dish. You get your vegetable and you also get a little more protein. So um, yeah, it's good. I started off uh, with some uh, taste elevated candied oranges and uh, uh, rosemary. I love Ooh. rosemary with Asiago and cheddar. I think it's really wonderful to be able to work with that. And wow. so uh, as, a, as a cracker base, I decided to go with the uh, uh, Rustic Bakery, their organic sourdoughs. Mm -hmm. Really, really simple, light, you know, they're organic. And uh, so I, I just spread a little bit of that on and then uh, dip in a little bit of the Taste Elevated Rosemary and um, oranges. Now these are candied oranges. And I think it's really fun to add a little bit of sweetness to this. Mm -hmm. and so you have the creaminess, obviously, of the cheese is really, I mean, that's, that's, that's just so amazing. And then you have the Asiago flavor and then a little of the rosemary. And I'm pairing it up with a, uh, this is a local brew here in Tampa. Uh, I do a, a fair amount of work with them, but this is 610 uh, Brewing. And this is their Lazy Days German Pilsner. So mm. I wanted something that would cleanse the palate on this. I don't want anything that's going to be big and interfere with the flavors. I just want to take a bite and then have it uh, uh, settle in just a little bit with the breadiness and the carbonation. Mm. I wish I was there. That, that little combo sounds delicious. The rosemary is absolutely magnificent with this. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it just really brings out the Asiago flavor. It brings out a little hint of the cheddar. There's some sweetness. There's some tanginess. It's really well uh, balanced in, in those. And, and the Pilsner is just designed to clean the palate, make it right. really simple. Right, right. Another thing I did want to tell you with our... Um, our spreads, part of their smoothness comes from real butter from Wisconsin. We buy grade A butter, just like the grade A cheddar. And that's why, especially as it warms up, as the cheese sits out, it just gets so smooth and that, that nice, um, you could, you just, you know what's in there. It's what makes it smooth, the butter. Just watching one of the original videos that, we, that you sent me, on uh, the manufacturing. And I do believe that I saw something like a 40 pound block of butter going into that vat. Yep, yep, yep. That's one of the main ingredients is the butter. And we buy that from the local Pine River Dairy, which is just two miles up the road from us. And they make great butter. Um, they've won contests with their butter as well. And they might be somebody that you might want to interview someday, Michael, and talk about, because they make a lot of flavored butters as well as just some great butter that we use in the spreads. So they've got a nice little store. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, 
I am a huge fan of butter. Uh, you know, <laughs> it shows. So butter makes um, it better. <laughs> uh, you know, for a lot of the interviews uh, that I've been talking with everybody, we talk a lot about how you support the local community and how do you how you support uh, farmers. And with what you do is that you really cross over a lot of areas. You know, you're being able to take uh, per, promote the butter uh, production, the farmers that provide the milk for that, the farmers that provide the milk for the cheddar, and right. that that's a, a tremendous amount of support that you give. So when somebody buys a tub of the uh, spread or the cold cheese, they are supporting a very large group of people that right. you work with. There's even one more layer in there is the whey. We use a, a whey product. So we use cheddar, butter, and whey. Those are the three main dairy ingredients that make up our spreads. So there we are supporting another industry, the whey, the dehydrated whey. So if you like Asiago cheese, you're gonna just love it because it tastes just like Asiago natural cut, but it's just smoother. It does, and we know somebody that does an uh, Asiago olive oil and rosemary. So mm -hmm. taking the rustic bakery, rosemary and olive oil sourdough crackers or flatbreads, wow. they work beautifully with this. It's kind of just a match made in heaven. Sometimes sure. you just, you know, you, you want something healthy, you want something to snack on, and that really gives you something that it'll give you, it'll be filling, plus it'll be, uh, you know, magnificent to enjoy. And right. hopefully you can get at least a couple servings out of this without, uh, <laughs> without having a fight with your uh, better half. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. All right. It's a good, yeah. Spicy yeah. beer. Okay. All right. So I... Have, I was born and raised in Wisconsin, in Milwaukee, where there are, which is kind of like the beer capital of Wisconsin, and I don't drink beer, but I love our spicy beer spread. I don't know what it is, and the spice in it is cayenne pepper and garlic. So at first people go, oh, I don't like spice, I don't want to try that, and I said, I always tell them, I don't like beer and I surely don't like spice. I don't like things that hurt me when I am eating it. But this one, I love. And my favorite thing to eat it on is these nice pretzels you can buy in the frozen department at your grocery store. Heat them up in the microwave. You can heat up the spicy beer spread in the microwave. Add a little bit of milk if you want it to be super dippable. And then just make sure you got a lot of those nice salt chunks on your pretzel and dig it into the spread, and then, hmm, enjoy. Hmm, I might have to have two bites. Mm -hmm. Now with this, I like to pair it with a nice Diet Coke. That's what I'm gonna have right now, because it tastes so good together. Mmm. So, You'll, you'll be hooked if you t get these pretzels. But there's nothing like a nice regular pretzel out of a bag that you dip it in as well. That's enjoyable. Another thing I do is I take Progresso Hearty, Hearty Tomato Soup. A serving of tomato soup with a serving of the spicy beer. Heat it together, stir it up. You, you look like you're a fancy cook making some sort of fun bisque. It's, it's just so tasty. I don't know, I can't explain it. But that's a lot of times my dinner. So now, what did you have it with, Michael? I'm very curious. Uh, well, you know, this, I, I'm, I'm from the Midwest. I, I grew up in Iowa and moved to Michigan. So I, you know, this is uh, uh, something that we literally grew up on was, uh, beer cheese and pretzels and that and so one of the things that i did as a kid is we had summer sausage and oh yeah so 
So I was thinking about that and I was thinking, well, you know, uh, summer sausage would be fun, but this is such a great spread that I really wanted to up the uh, ante on this. And so uh, what I did was I picked out uh, a Genoa uh, salami. So uh, oh. this is Volpe and this is an amazing uh, quality of the, uh, uh, of the Genoa. And you can see that it's got a lot of uh, uh, fattiness to it. Oh, yes. So uh, this has got so much flavor, but because the, the beer cheese has got so much, I decided to go with the Brewer's Crackers. And this is everything. And literally it's everything. It's spent grains that they make this from, and it's uh, uh, rosemary, thyme, garlic, and basil. So, you know, it's just got, it's literally has just about everything. And you, you the, what I was afraid of was that the cheese wouldn't be able to stand up with it. And, and I had no fear of that. <laughs> the cheese can, can oh, with, without any hesitation, stand up to this, this magnificent richness of all here. I don't lose it at all. I, uh, yep. Uh, I have to say that uh, I had to open up a second pack of the Genoa because it is my favorite. I think it reminds me so much of uh, summer sausage, that kind of flavor, and putting these sure. together. And being from Michigan and wanting something a little bit more or needing something a little bit more robust with this is mm -hmm. I picked Bell's Two-Hearted uh, Ale. And it is uh, an American pale ale, 100% uh, Centennial hops, just a magnificent, rich beer that uh, cuts into everything, but it doesn't take away. It brings it all mm. together. Nice. I do find with the spicy beer spread that the flavor just almost builds a little bit. It just lingers in your mouth. So when it mixes with that sausage, I bet that's amazing. Mm. I'm going to have to try that. Mm. <laughs> There's a little spiciness with the garlic and the salami. So wow. it kind of brings out more of the cheddar. So you really get that cheddar, but what you really notice, and I think it's really cool that, you know, it, it didn't dawn on me until you said it, but the butter in this cheese is mm -hmm. just so rich. It's, it's mm -hmm. magnificent. It's creamy. It's right. so cream butter. So it's, yeah. it's not overwhelming, but, with the crackers and all those things, it, it really blends in really well. And you could you could really put a really strong IPA or pale ale, you could go Sierra Nevada. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, this is one where you can have a robust beer, a robust sausage, a robust uh, uh, cracker, and it all stays together. So this is mm -hmm. a magnificent, rich, big, bold uh, ability to be able to bring to a party. Right. Ah. All right. So what else do you do with uh, beer? Um, with the spicy beer? Um, well, you were talking about those nice crackers. It's also just nice on um, some good bread. I've had it with that. Uh, the tomato soup was my, my go-to for sure. Um, even just regular chips are nice too with the, the beer. It just, pretzel rods, um, yeah, try, just give it a try on whatever you think would, would like a little uh, extra added spice. That's what I would do with the spicy beer. Yeah, yeah. it's magnificent. Ah, the pepper jack. So, pepper jack is made with the pepper jack cheese. And what I like to do is I take it and I put a, you know, pretty good amount on a bun. And then I add my hamburger. And the reason I put it on the bun is that it's, it stays on. If you try to smear it on the burger, it gets kind of slippery, but on the bun, you're all set. Then 
Of course, got to add a little ketchup. Some mushrooms would be nice too. And then, ready? Just have a bite. Mmm. It's as if you just put a slice of pepper jack cheese on there. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I need another bite. I'm going to get closer to the cheese. Mmm. I'm going to eat the rest of that for dinner. Mm. I should have done mushrooms with that. That would be a nice combo. Mm. Uh, so, I, think, I think it's important to know that, you know, you're just not opening these up and dipping crackers in them, that you're able to do a lot more with these than just, uh, you know, uh, uh, open up and, and consume. Even yep. though that I have to say that there's nothing wrong with no. opening up and consuming them. I, I didn't have any trouble with that already. No. Well, the yeah. box of wheat thins, you'll be all set. So I, I've been a, a huge fan of their horseradish uh, for for years, and uh, you were kind enough to send uh, two of them along with this. And I have to say that they're both consumed. They are a now, single serving. <laughs> I can't help myself with that. It's just amazing. Now you talk about summer sausage. The summer sausage horseradish sandwich can't be beat. Try that. That'll, I want to hear what you think about a summer sausage horseradish sandwich. That is delicious. Horseradish has so many uses. Um, I put it in mashed potatoes. I put it in macaroni and cheese. I have put it in a Bloody Mary. I've also put it um, on, on a platter, put some cocktail sauce in those little shrimps and you have a shrimp dip. I've stirred it with ketchup and used it as a, a sauce for shrimp. Um, what else did I do with it? It's good on hot dogs. Um, put it again, put that on the bun, put your hot dog on there. Um, the other recipe that's really delicious is a sweet potato cracker, some, a dabble of horseradish, some smoked salmon, and a caper. Mwah! It's delicious. You, you're going to have to go and buy all those ingredients and try it because it's so good. So. Wow. Tell me what you tell me what you did with it. Well, you already did. You you just ate it. You, you don't even have any to taste. So you ate them all. <laughs> well, surprised on how spicy the pepper jack is. It was a little more spicy than what I'm used to because a lot of those pepper jacks that you buy are uh, don't take this the wrong way, but they're they're weeny and they're wimpy and uh, they don't have that real rich flavor. There's right. real peppers in here. These, uh, yeah. This is authentic pepper jack. You know, yep. there's, there's no messing around with this one. So when, right. I, when I tried it and then I was comparing it against the jalapeno, you know, there's a lot of similarity between those two. And mm -hmm. I was really kind of surprised on uh, how, how much that, sh that I, I got out of that. So with this, uh, I decided that I would go with a, uh, a, a sweet peach. Uh, oh. and, and yeah, because I was, I was afraid of the, the, the not afraid. I, I was concerned that the spiciness would come up so much that I really wanted to kind of tone that down just a little bit. So I thought that a sweet peach would work really well. And, oh boy. Uh, uh, I use that again on one of the regular crackers. So, are you talking a jam or an actual slice of a peach? This is um, Virginia chutney. So it's a uh -huh. sweet peach chutney. Okay. And so I decided to go with that because again, it, it adds a, a little bit of sweetness to it. And that sweetness kind of helps tone things down. And there's just sure. a, a hint of, um, of of apple cider vinegar or vinegar in here to give it a little bit of a kick. So mm -hmm. you get a little bit of a kick, but
but it also helps kind of sweeten out, balance out a little bit of those peppers. And then uh, I'm actually uh, pairing the next two together uh, with a cider because I really wanted to bring in uh, some sweetness, apple, uh, you know, to be able to kind of cool those heats down. Sure. And I really sure. like the way ciders work. And this is a, a Gypsy Circus Cider out of Tennessee. Uh, and this is their Lotus Dreamer. And uh, mm -hmm. it's just a really great, uh, easy cider that goes well with all these flavors. Another thing I do with the pepper jack is I put it in scrambled eggs. Gives that a little zip. Oh. I can see I that. Very, I'm, I'm going to have to try that with the chutney. That sounds really great. It helps. Uh, I'm not a, uh, a wimp when it comes to spices. I, I love them. But I think that what I love about them is the spiciness but not as much of the heat. So the sweet peach sure. leaves all of the spiciness there, but takes a little bit of that heat away. Now, hmm. originally I thought about, because we're going to be coming up to the ghost pepper, I thought, you know, maybe all that sweetness there will help it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> we'll see. The pepper jack is also a, a nice um, item to use on a, on a wrap sandwich. Picture that with some turkey, maybe ham, roast beef even is nice. So add yeah, a that's little that, that slices that you get at the deli or at uh, some of the uh, fast food places, they, they know nothing about the, no. the spiciness here. This is authentic. This is real. There, there is the, these are the most intense, rich, balanced, great uh, flavors that you can have in a pepper jack. This is, this is yeah. what pepper jack should be. And uh, I really, uh, really love that. It's, it's just amazing. And I would have never, I guess I, I probably would have never thought that you would get this much rich flavor from a from a cold pack from a spread that that this works with that you know I, I thought well you know it'd really be out of a uh, a singular specialty cheese you know that somebody's you know spending twelve dollars twenty dollars a pound on right. this right. beats them all right well thank you I that, can see I, why it won so many awards yeah that's well I think that's part of the uh, uniqueness of Pine River spreads is the flavors are, are really there. They don't just dissipate on your tongue when you eat them. You, you get that, that flavor builds in your mouth and that creamy, cheese, cheesy flavor stays with you. And whatever flavor it is, you get that. So the beer, you some, like with the spicy beer, you get some spice, but you also get that little notes of the beer at the end. Like you just said with the pepper jack, you, it tastes like a piece of pepper jack cheese that you buy at a nice specialty cheese shop. It's got that really rich flavor. And same thing with the Asiago. And I, I guess that's something we, we strive to do and we, we're um, been pretty successful with it as, as the judges tell us at those contests. They say, this is good stuff. It tastes real because it is real, real cheese. You know, I, I've always, uh, back in 2012, I was a judge at the World Cheese Awards in, in London. And uh, we, on our table, we had this, uh, uh, what looked like some sort of pepper jack, but it was bigger chunks of peppers on that. We saved it to the end. And uh, it was the most intense pepper jack I've ever had. As a matter of fact, I think I'm still tasting it from 2012. <laughs> Unbalanced completely where this is balanced. This is what yeah. you want from a pepper jack. You don't want, sure. you don't want the flavors. And, I, and I, I've said this before, you know, the art of blending cheese with flavors isn't about having it dominate by that flavor. In other words, right. this isn't just pepper jack. This is also jack. You can really taste the flavors of the cheese, of the butter, 
all these things are still there. They're not, they're not lost. It's not like you're eating uh, uh, the, the peppers. You're eating everything, and it comes right there. You know, this is, all of these so far, you could just eat with a spoon and be happy. I, I've seen it. I've been at trade shows, and people have taken one and, and eaten it with a spoon, and that, that's really gratifying. It means it tastes great on its own. Yeah, that, that's funny. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, pepper jack would also be another one to put in mashed potatoes. I don't know if you thought of that, or a baked potato. Um, a roast beef sandwich would probably be pretty good. Wherever you would throw a piece of pepper jack cheese on, just spread a little of the spread on, and you will have that nice flavor combination. So. Okay. Ah, the jalapeno. Jalapeno has been one of our flavors for a lot of years. I again took it and warmed it up in the microwave a little bit. Um, you can warm it up just as it is or add a little milk. That's always good. And I just have a nice tortilla chip. Dip that in. Mmm. I can't double dip, can I? Well, I can for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That always reminds me of being out at a restaurant having nachos or something. So then I need to have a glass of wine. I'm not a super connoisseur of wine. I like a nice Riesling with everything. But the jalapeno, it's, it's a nice sell. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though I'm at home, I feel like I'm out kind of out somewhere fun. Now the jalapeno, that is, um, we have, I would say that's our lowest spicy. We have a hot habanero. And then Michael did talk about the ghost pepper that, that we're saving after we enjoy this, because we're gonna enjoy this. Jalapeno is nice on, um, throw it in your chili. I've also put it in meatloaf, kind of, Mix it in your, when you're mixing with your other ingredients, eggs and breads and, um, you know, whatever you add to your meatloaf, throw some jalapeno in there for a little extra flavor. Or even take meatballs and put a dollop of jalapeno in the center, and put your meatball around it, and then you'll get that gooey, yummy flavor, um, just as, either as an appetizer or in your favorite sauce. Um, what else do we put it on? It's good on a sandwich. I put it. I uh, put it with turkey. I like to put turkey with a lot of our cheese spreads. Just elevates it. And I'm always about adding extra protein and extra calcium. So, what did you have it with, Michael? Well, again, you know, you're working with uh, uh, another level of uh, of the heat, and you know the. The balance is is so amazing. I think what the the amount of butter that you put in here really kind of balances out that you do have some heat, and and that's important because it is jalapeno, and you, you really want that. But you also have the delicious spiciness of the jalapenos, and mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people are afraid of of that because they may have been you know <laughs> singed, burnt by them yeah, uh, in the great. past because of the intensity of that. Uh, and it's really nice to be able to taste the flavor of the jalapeno with some spiciness, but not so spicy that you can't taste the jalapeno. And again, that's exactly. where your balance on these are, are really amazing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I decided that you got to add more sweetness to this. And okay. so one of my favorite is Effie's homemade nut cakes, uh, or this is actually oh. a corn cake. Because I, you know, you think of a corn tortilla and the sure. jalapenos and all of that, but sure. there's some sweetness there. This is, there's no funny stuff in here. And then right. I decided to use a fruit paste, and this is Rutherford and Meyer, their quince paste. And so I wanted something that would have no sugar. In other words, it's just fruit. There's no no okay. other things that are in that. So uh, with the jalapeno spread on the corn cake and then a little bit of the 
quince paste, which, you know, quince paste tastes, a lot of people say it's like apricot, you know, but I think it's like uh, apricot on steroids, you know, it's got some really rich flavors to it. And of course, I'm staying with the uh, Gypsy Cider Circus, uh, their, uh, uh, their Lotus Dreamer, which is, by the way, it's an orange blossom flowered cider. So it's got the oranges in it. Uh, I got the quince paste. I got a corn uh, cake and jalapeno spread. Mm. That sounds really good, that corn spread. Oh, spicy, but not, you know, over the top. Mm -hmm. The sweetness kind of settles things in there just a little bit. So if you're not a big fan of you know, heat, this takes all the heat away. That's not always a good thing, but, but for me, um, after still, still tasting the ghost peppers from earlier, this is all right, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. And, and you know, the, the cider sweetness is just enough. There's some citrus, uh, you know, acidity in there to clean does a great job of it. And, uh, you know, I thought about, there was, you know, Rutherford Meyer does like plum and pea, uh, you know, pear uh, and all that. And I was uh, trying to decide on which one would actually go with the jalapeno. And that's when I went with the quince because the sweetness of an apricot, and it's almost like a little bit closer to the, uh, to the core you know, to, and, and so it's, it's got a, just a hint of bitterness, which works wonderful at all. I'm going to have to try that in my next little gathering. Interesting. Yeah, I've always just been so happy with it with the chips. <laughs> That's what we've been doing. Um, it is nice to stir into your taco meat. You know, like if you're making tacos, stir some jalapeno cheese spread in there, and then you've already got, you don't even have to add cheese on top because you've got that cheesy flavor already in it with a little extra flavor. So, um, yeah, wherever you want to add a little more zip, jalapeno works great, but it doesn't hurt you. Like Michael said, the balance is there and it just, um, it just tastes good. It adds a lot of nice flavor. Scrambled eggs, that's another good jalapeno one. It does. Our next cheese is ghost pepper. And the best thing to do for that is um, pair it with this right here. If you want to, is a fire extinguisher because it is hot. And I'm talking so hot that I can't eat it. But there are people that love it. So I know, Michael, you tasted it because you're, you're a great cheese guy. Um, I, I'll, I'll try to put a little bit on my tongue, guys, just for, but I, I know jalapeno and spicy beer are usually my limit, but I'll do this for the, the good of the show. How about that? Ready? I really should have my glass of milk left, or a glass of milk can take it down, or the Asiago can also cool it down. Um, or a nice cheddar chaser is good too, some cheddar spread. So, I mean, I have the itty bittiest amount on my knife, as you can see. Yeah. The, the thing about ghost pepper, and the reason it's called that is it sneaks up on you. So I have folks at trade shows that say, it's not that bad. And within 30 seconds, they're, it just, it, grows. It just, it sneaks up on you like a ghost. And then they say, oh, <laughs> there it is. So, um, yeah, I got to bring out the Riesling for that. <sighs> Pairing it, oh uh, gosh. We have a restaurant in Milwaukee that puts it on a, a a beef sandwich, like a, a roast beef, and they sell a ton of it. So it's, um, it enhances whatever you put it with and brings it to a new level. So Michael, have you 
Are you there still? Going to try it? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm fine. You know, it's, uh, it, it's one of those things where uh, I think that if you're not a big fan of Ghost Pepper, you don't need a lot. In other words, this container will last you a millennium because uh, it is, you just, I, I just, I spread it just very, very thin, just a little right. bit of coating. And, and I put it on the everything uh, brewer's cracker, you oh. know, because it's got all those flavors in there. And so what it's going to do is it's just going to kick it up. But again, I just touched it just a little bit on here because I didn't want it to be, you know, this big, big flavor profile. Right. So typically, uh, you know, you, you, I thought about maybe a, a milk stout, something like that. But, you know, after tasting it, 100% whole <laughs> milk. cow's milk is just going to be my savior after this little bite. I truly have had um, people put it on a cracker inch and a half thick and just have no problem just eating it and enjoying it and asking for another. So it's just what tolerance your taste buds have, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I, I, I just love about these flavors is that you get the flavors. You're not, you're not just tasting a, uh, a cheese with stuff that's just overpowering. It's a balance of that. You really, you know, that's, it's like the pepper jack. That's the best pepper jack I've ever had. And it's because the flavors are there. You taste all of the peppers in there. And, and it's just so rich. It's, it's as if you just freshly cut them up and then mixed them into the, the spread. And, and it just, it's that well. So there's only one other thing that I can do to kind of help out on the, uh, <laughs> on that, uh, a little bit of Dob Creek bourbon. And, uh, Yum. Uh, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, numbs out a little bit of the, the burn. I mean, my, yeah, that little it itty bit I put on my tongue is still, still hurting. I'll, well, <laughs> here's to the, you and the ghost pepper. <laughs> a little bourbon. Yeah. A cure-all. I found that it works for a lot of things. Yes, you, they, People, it, it becomes a novelty to bring to parties and people challenge their friends, but there are truly people that love it and hot cheeses are, are hot. Um, the Scorpion and the, there's another really hot one out there. I mean, we go to a trade show and they're just like, oh yeah, that's not even the hottest Scoville value anymore. It's just, I always am shocked and say, really, there's something hotter than this and someone eats it? But yes, and then there's people say, oh, I even grow my own ghost peppers, and I love it, and, and they do. But it's funny, the reaction. I've seen people turn pink, like it just starts in their throat, works up to their ears, and gets to the top of their head, and I've seen people just burst out in sweat beads. I've seen people hiccup. I've seen people start coughing and run for the nearest bottle of water. Um, it, it's funny how the, it just, the reaction is crazy. And so people say, Butter me another cracker. That was delicious. So I don't know. I just don't know, but we've got well, it. I, I do have to say that uh, going back to the Asiago uh, and, and um, uh, the large amount that I just consumed was uh, absolutely <laughs> fabulous. It uh, uh, it's now a spicy uh, Asiago, but uh, it, it's really good. <laughs> You know, uh, I have to commend you for the high quality of these cheeses, uh, the, the blending. It's really well done, and it's very, very enjoyable. Uh, I have no qualms about sharing this with some uh, snobby cheese friends that, uh, you know, are like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I only eat this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, when you have a quality product like this it's so nice to be able to sit back and enjoy this uh when we finish here i'm moving this little party over to the next room where it's uh, my den where uh we're gonna sit down and uh 
we'll, we'll probably leave the ghost pepper here, but uh, everything <laughs> else will be certainly, it might actually be dinner tonight with, uh, with the wraps, because uh, I got some chicken, uh, I got some fried chicken that I could just, uh, you know, break oh. up from the breast and do some wraps Absolutely. with this pepper jack, because, oh right. yeah, yeah. Um, I've added the pepper jack to macaroni and cheese too. And Asiago goes great in mac and cheese. And I'm talking, you just buy the single serve craft or whatever brand you want. I hope that's okay to say a brand. The microwavable mac and cheese, make it. I even add their powdered um, cheese that goes with it. And then I put our cheese in it and then smear, you know, stir it up. Oh, it just becomes an elevated, rich side dish. Uh, yeah, it's. It's good. I do want to thank um, Wisconsin or the dairy farmers of Wisconsin. They do an awesome job helping us cheese makers um, to get our product out there and tell people about dairy and cheese and all that. Uh, they do a great job. I also want to thank our Wisconsin farmers because without them, we wouldn't have the good milk that goes into that great cheese. And great cheese is what makes great cheese spread. And then Finally, I really, really, really have to thank our staff because without their dedicated service every day to do the best job they can to make the best cheese in the world like we, we did make this year, um, it just, it wouldn't happen. Everybody does their part. It takes a team to make it. There's not just one cheese maker or one person that does all the mixing or, or flavors. We all, we all work together and it, it's, a, it's really a great thing to be a part of that. Um, I am going to be with Pine River, yeah, 40 years this fall, and it's, it's been delightful. So I appreciate your time letting me talk, and I just hope everybody knows, spread beyond the cracker. Try it all different ways. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I want to thank you for coming in and, and sharing this with us and uh, telling us the stories and uh, bringing all these great cheeses and people can go to your website and be able to order. I know that there's a little hiccup on shipping right now. Uh, right. Be some protests going on and having some trouble getting through the city and all that. So uh, people just be, uh, you know, uh, bear with it. But uh, uh, thank you for right. bringing all these here and all the great cheeses that you've done in the past and Keep doing that because it's uh, very rewarding for all of us here. So. I have one little, fun little story about my son. So um, growing up in the business, he went off to college. And, well, these fit really nicely in a college dorm refrigerator. So, of course, we sent a lot with him. It adds to the food budget, you know. We can just have that for a snack or whatever. And about mid-October, he called up and he says, Mom, I need some more of that cheese spread. Um, you know, my friends think it's the greatest and, and it isn't half bad. So <laughs> he, they now have an appreciation of our cheese spread, even though they grew up eating it all the time. So, and our grandkids are big fans of it, but it's just funny how he had to go away and say, wow, it's pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah, so. I think that, that happens to a lot of people that work in the business. It's like, oh yeah, that's what I grew up on. And yeah, it's, yeah. You know, vineyards are the same way, you know, so. Exactly. So a little different. Yeah. All yeah, right, um, Mary, thank you yeah. so much for coming in and being able to spend some time with us. Thank yeah. you, and uh, let everybody know how much uh, we appreciate what they're doing. Be safe. And yeah. uh, Yep, and hopefully next year everything is back and we can be in person and we can bow to each other because we won't be able to hug or shake hands for a while, I think. But we can always eat cheese. So, all right. There you go. All right. All right Maybe I'll see you in San Francisco in January. I plan to be there if all is, is, is if it's a go, we'll go. So I know. They called me today. You go in? I said, I don't know. We'll see. I yeah. I think we'll be okay. We've got lots of smart people out there working really hard to get us back back and running. Well, I suggested that uh, with our packs and our badges that they give us a face mask but they have really fun sayings on them. So they have like 10 different ones. So everybody's got something a little different. So if you see oh, that, that was my idea. Oh, well, awesome. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy your happy hour with your Thank cheese you. spread. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll talk soon. All right. Okay. Bye. -bye. Take care. Yep. Bye.
Thank you again for watching Cheese In Depth. I'm Michael Landis. And today's webinar was sponsored by the good folks at Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. Take care. Be safe. Wash your hands. Ha, <laughs> ha,